so by this time Bernard was back in Jersey. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um so the, the, but then you get a call to come in ninety six. The album came out, um another level came out, was it ninety six or ninety seven? Ninety six, September ninety six. So March. March of ninety six is when I got the call and the album came out in September. How many tracks were you able to be on in, in that I show? Thought, I thought everything. Yeah, they, I mean, well, they, they had they they were already recording, like they had already most of the stuff was written and look and backgrounds and stuff were recorded. Mm. When I got there, you know, we were pretty much doing leads. So he added me to to the backgrounds and you know, we just we just laid it out. <clears throat> okay. One of um yeah, I mean w- w- so you come to you come that was was that your first time of future records rec- mm-hmm. recording? First time, yeah. <laughs> the um what was it I mean what was it because I know you you sort of met Teddy briefly back in the day, but what was it like right. coming to Virginia Beach, seeing the guy in the studio and with his team of producers and it was everything. It, it, that was like a that was a dream. Well, it wasn't really a dream. Yeah, it was a dream come true. I I won't find because I always I thought Teddy was so crazy. Like he was incredible. And I I would. This is another thing. <laughs> Even with I'm going back to the flex now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would we would have meetings like you know we would record songs and then Lil would come in to you know to listen to what we did. Mm. And and he crushed me one day. Like you know, we thought what we had was tough. You know, like we had dope records, right? And Lul comes in to me and listen to what we what we doing. And he was like, yo, he said, right, let me let y'all hear something. And he was working on Teddy was working on Bobby's album at that time. That's my fi- that's my one of my top three albums, <laughs> the Bobby album. And this man, Lul Silas Jr., goes and plays this Bobby Brown album. And after that, I was like, I don't want to do the flex no more. <laughs> like, that's, it. that's it. I was like, that's it. And then not long after, well, yeah, a couple of years later, yeah, a couple I, get years. Call, I get the call from Teddy. So I was like, yes, let's let's go. So for those who are listening, so Lil, Lil Sowles Jr. was, he was the Barry Gordy of the 90, 80s and 90s, um, yeah. MCA, you know, he was responsible for new edition and and guy and and um uptown and 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 you know he all of, that. All, all, all of the stuff i remember speaking with melvin riley jr and he told he was saying how when he passed ready for the world it affected how they um it affected their record their sales and everything because you know he did remake he did mixes drums and all yeah. that stuff um you, how, I mean, we'll, just before you get to Black Street, because it, it's good to, because you know, I think I'm learning about him, because um, we know he signed Aaron to Siles Records, you know, we uh, Siles Records. So we, but yeah. what was he? I've heard. You know, I want people to get to know what he was like for Black music. Well, oh, he was, he was like you said, Barry Gordy in the '90s. He was, he was everything for Black music. Yeah, he was Lou was incredible. Now, see, I didn't, I didn't know him all that well personally. You know what I mean? I just know his. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I got yeah. you there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, yeah, Lou, Lou was, he was black music. He he was R and B music at that time. That, that's what it was. <clears throat> So when he was playing the Bobby album, was he trying to say, "Nah, this is what I want you guys to do"? Or what? Yeah, pretty much. He was like, "Yeah, that you know, that's cute. What y'all doing is cute. <laughs> but this is what I need. I need something like this." And uh, you know, Marley wasn't. He, you know, Marley in hip hop. Yeah, was on. Was in the hip-hop, don. Marley was like untouchable. On yeah, so yeah. When they came to what we were trying to do. You know, he Marley. He didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was so it's basically left up to us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we weren't we weren't competing with that. What was your favorite track on the Bobby album? Um all right. Yeah, one more night. Ooh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. That is my favorite track on that. It's six and a half minutes. 
um, <laughs> it just goes up and it just it's it's a, it's a song and then and it breaks it yeah <laughs> just wait, give me wait, one more now it down, he yeah. the, the hook he'll take two of the notes out and have one uh, Teddy was uh, <laughs> Teddy don't think like that no more he ain't he he's not he's not he ain't on that level to me yeah right. yeah yeah he yeah yeah he he just ain't doing that type of that innovative stuff anymore yeah uh, yeah, I, I would say that the Bobby album production wise was probably I mean, you know, the guy album you know, that was that was that was that was, that was a, the first guy album, you know, that with Timmy and the groove me was a, just a different. So you don't you don't really put them in because that's that's when you created a whole new sound. Um, other people talk about the future because it was, you know, lots of variance and everything. The production on the future was better to me. It yeah. It was a better sounding album. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dave Way was, you know, the engineer there. Yeah. Bernard was the heavily involved and stuff. But the Bobby album, to me, the the the, the sounding, the, the 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 instruments, the you know, they did seven tracks. He got Mary, Bob, you know, he got everyone working yeah. on that. It's, it's it's still one of my favorite albums, and um, it's a, it's a crazy album. Still. Yeah, and 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 I and I think you are right that and but the first Black Sweet album too, um, they took a lot of the energy from the Bobby album. And you could tell musically. Yeah, they, 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 around they, the same time, right? Yeah, they right. did a lot, but I don't know what what happened after from the mid to late nineties. As you said, they they they're the taking the chances and stuff. Um, sort of change, yeah, but we'll we'll we'll, it's, we'll, it's... we'll move to that now. From the Black Street, the um, another level um, can get you out of my mind. Mm. It, you know that was that that's that you know um, that was a good. I mean, I was like, oh, that's this is different from the rest of the stuff, and it was as long as like a story being told, and mm. you could visualize what was you know on the other circuit you're, you're dancing to it, but that was the main track on that album that you could think, wow, he's telling a story and you're following it. Um, when the video came out for Half Plenty, I was like, man, who are these women singing? Because it spoiled the song. This is the problem with Teddy. Right? <laughs> Teddy don't want to let, he don't want to let nobody else get shine. Now, that record, that's, a, that's my record. That's a record yeah. I produced and I wrote, right? Mm. And Truthfully, that record was written probably 10 years before we did it. Wow. But but when I got to Virginia, you know, Teddy knew that I was I was writing and stuff. So I played it for him. He was like, yo, we gotta do that. And he he definitely took my production to a whole nother level on that okay. record. No okay. doubt. But when it came to like people wanted, they wanted people wanted us to release that song as a single. Yeah. Teddy wouldn't do it because he didn't produce it. He, it wasn't his record, so he wouldn't do it. And then when it got to a point where we ha they insisted that we use it for this movie, he went and remixed it so it could be his version in the movie. Uh, the half plenty, okay. Yeah, man, that's that's Teddy's that's a that's Teddy's problem right there. Okay. His problem. He don't want nobody else to shine, yo. Yeah, I I. I yeah, I I didn't like the yeah yeah you know it's it was a lot of people have read, written down and says well th that was one of one of their favorite Black Sweet Out songs, and and I and to me it was one of my favorite ones, but yeah I didn't like the remix at all, um, um and I didn't like the the, the the girls singing it just took it just didn't sound didn't sound great at all, but so uh, so that's 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 okay. Um, yeah. Because you brought it, yeah. Because that was a very different style in, into it. But then, what was the experience right on the other tracks? So, like, no diggity. I mean, did what was it like when they were coming up with the beats, and then and they were saying, "Come on, guys." Well, no diggity, no diggity was one of the songs that we that we started when I was there. Okay. But um, a a, a guy by the name of uh, Will. Styles, Trick. I think this is uh, the real tricky or something. Okay, yeah, Will did that. He he uh he came up with that song and and pinned it pretty much. I wasn't in the studio when it was written, but No Diggity was a that joint was cr is still crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but as uh, but but 
what was it you, you, when you guys were with 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 there? Um, did Mark was he already there before when you? Before yeah, Mark when? was there before I got there. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people asked, did you know Dave Hollister before you got to call to join Blackstreet? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, Levi, did you know Levi before? No. Nope. And Levi's from Jersey too, but I didn't know him. Okay. But, but Bob knew him and Bernard knew him. Like, you know, like I said, I was in the church. Like, I was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're they funny. wasn't in the church. Okay. <laughs> I would have thought because Bob sounds like he was almost like the bishop's son the way he sings. I no, mean, no, no. Bob was in the church. Bob was in the church, but like I don't know Levi from in the church. Okay, you know, okay, you know okay, okay. Like, if, if Levi had been in the church, I would know him. You okay, know I mean? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, but then so you, you yeah so Mark comes in. Um, I think I think he's he's probably. You know, vocally, I, I don't know how many people can reach his range, and he just seems very quiet and stuff. But when you looked at the dynamic when you joined, because you must have seen the first Black Street album and, and known about and seen Dave and Levi, and then you, you and Mark are coming in, did you think there's a gap, or did you think, oh man, we're sounding better collectively, or what was your thinking? I mean, I didn't, I didn't really compare it. You know what I mean? I just, I just knew that we had something crazy, like the chemistry, like the the brotherhood. Everything was just it, like it was, it was, it was, it was spiritual. I, I mean, that's 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 basically ah, that's all I can say about it. It was a it was a spiritual experience doing that mm-hmm. album. Like we slept in the stu- we slept in the studio. We had cots, like. <laughs> you know, it was just we were just knocking it out, and we enjoyed being around each other. I mean, you're saying you got there March, and the album came out in September, so and you would have had to go to ma- master it. So you had very s- small window to, but you said a lot of the production was done, and and it's just about vocal. Yeah, they, well, but prior to me coming to Virginia, prior to me to getting the call to come, they had already, like, they had already auditioned a few people. And I think they went to uh, Trinidad to record the album to, you know, to get focused. Okay. And um, so they did, a, you know, they did most of the backgrounds and the writing and all of that stuff there. So when they got back to Virginia, it was really just, <clears throat> it was really just, you know, fine tuning, cutting leads and mixing. Yeah. Apart from No Diggity, what would you say was one of your other favorite tracks on that, on, on another level? That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> let's stay in love. Let's oh yeah, let's... Um, I want to be a man. Paradise. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Lord is real for sure. Yeah. It, it it really it was only one song that I didn't like on the album. Which one was that? Uh, I'll give it to you. Have you won it? I didn't like that song. Oh, I Adam. gave it. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's the only song I don't like. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I don't like it, but yeah, yeah. That's that's a crazy album, man. I, I'm I'm truly blessed to, to have been a part of that that yeah uh, that record. Yeah. So I remember um, ninety ninety six when it came out. Um, I was in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, in college, and. You guys came out probably this week or this the this week or the week after the week after home again, new edition. No, the albums came out the same day. Oh, the same day. So okay, so I, that's I knew that I so I knew that they they you know they came they were number one and and you guys right. slowly crept kept up and and um, and then you know passed them. Right. Um, I was. You guys came to Milwaukee in '97 on tour. You you were with 702 and New Edition, I think, and, Keith and Keep Sweat. Although Keith mm-hmm. didn't come to Milwaukee, but it was just yourself, 702, and and uh, New Edition. First time, you know. So I, as I said, I'm, I was in the crowd, and you know, you guys came out. I still remember when you guys um, did um, you did Billy Jean. <laughs> You I'm like, wow, you know, you don't only did. Why well, <laughs> you gotta mention that? 
<laughs> it was. I mean, I was. I was go. I'm a big Michael Jackson fan. So here's. Oh, here's, also you yeah. enjoyed it. Oh, you I, I, there was. Yeah, come on. I was really. I'm like, wow, you guys did Billie Jean because you did a Billie Jean No Diggity remix. So I, right. you know, so I. I yeah, so I was like, wow, this is great, you know. And then, of course, so that's. You know, I've been on many concerts. I've seen Mint Condition, Mary, Boys to Me. I can't even, you know. In the summertime, everyone shows up, but that was still my favorite concert ever. Because, yeah, wow! Because you guys rocked it, you know. And as, as I said, I was, I've been a big Teddy fan since the early from the eighties, but right. then seeing Blacksmith perform, but then New Edition come out, and even though the album wasn't as good, but you know they've been performing since they were five years old. Oh, well, think, it's, so it's you, still you know, crazy. Yeah, so I, you had <laughs> I, every night I stood on the side of the stage to see them dudes every night. Yeah, I tell people if you hadn't seen them because that year, you know, they they had Bell Biff DeVoe would come and do their set, you had Johnny do his set, Ralph do his set, and Bobby does his set, and then they all come together. I'm saying, you know, they could have done the whole night on there by themselves, but wow. it, it, yeah, so that, that's how crazy they were. But they were. The last time New Edition and Guy were on the road back in the 90s, uh, uh, ladies, they had it, beef and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. When you guys want to talk, can you? It was was it all love? There was no like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, none of that, no, none of that. I mean, like Black Street is just a, you know, like we quiet, we, you know, what I mean, <laughs> nobody's really, you know, like we just do our gig and hmm. keep it moving, man. That was, a, you know, that was a good thing for me. So in the in the nineties, here's Blackstreet coming out, and you see what Jodeci were doing. Um, Boys to Men were doing their stuff. You had Jagged Edge. You had, I mean, I mean the nineties and, and bands were were just unbelievable. How did you think you guys did when it came to not being compared? Because I I wouldn't have I never I don't know many people no many people that wouldn't have compared Blackstreet to Boys to Men or Jodeci or Jagged Eddie. It almost felt as if you guys had your own lane and people were like oh that's Blackstreet and they didn't like lump you in with the rest of the groups. Did you? What was your thoughts? I mean. Yeah, I, I guess that, that's that's a Teddy thing. You know, Teddy wanted to, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't, he didn't want us drinking and, you know, nobody smoked or anything, <laughs> but, you know, if you go to a club, you will have a drink. You couldn't do it around Teddy. Teddy he'd, he'd be like, yo, <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> No, I've spoken to people who've known him since the 80s, and they said he was, that's the thing, he just didn't do drugs or drink and stuff, so he was always, but for you guys, you, you went in the news for for anything, so there wasn't any bad publicity around Black Street, it was just... Like I said, we 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 all came up in the church, like we, you know, we we didn't live, we, we didn't live crazy like that. Not to say nobody else is living crazy, I'm just... I'm yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like we do the show. We didn't do too many after parties or any of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I guess that's that's really what kind of separated us. Yeah, along along with the music, like our album was a lot. You know what I mean? Like we had a bunch of different styles of music on our album. Yeah, and I can't say that for for any of the other groups. I don't. I mean, not not that I could think of. Not that I could recall right now. Yeah, but then also you you, you didn't have. On the another level, you didn't have a lead singer as such, so right. you know, and you know, boys to men would have their, um, you know, one A would always do the the end, and you had Sean that was started off, and and so you always had their progression, so you always knew what to expect. With Jodeci, it was mainly KC, and um, then JoJo would join right. in and stuff. So, <laughs> but with with you know, with Blackstreet, it was you know, depending on the song, you'd all have, um. You'd all have your parts and stuff, and and it was very different collectively. Yeah, Teddy, he did that purposely, which which was awesome. I mean, you know, we all got, as far as the recording, we all got, you know, equal time. Yeah, I would say on on the records. Now, in visually, the whole other story. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Yeah, okay. Teddy wants to be out front. Teddy wants to be out front, and which was cool with me because that's not my, you know, what I mean? that's not my thing anyway. But yeah, yeah. You 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the um, you guys, you know, you, you know, you win a Grammy for. Um, I remember you guys on the Tonight Show. Um, I lived because uh, I moved to LA, but uh, yeah, I lived in the states, and I remember when Jay Leno says. Congratulated you guys for knocking Macarena off the, off the chart because Macarena. Was, yeah, yeah. We have to congratulate you guys. That. <laughs> With that, I mean, yeah. it, were you surprised how the song took off and and just became a number one, Billboard number one? I mean, this is not yes, uh, cross. I mean, still playing now, but were you surprised as a group, or did you think, yeah, we knew it was gonna? I was surprised. The, the group would, the, they would probably say no, but. For me, it, yeah, that was. I mean, it, the record was dope to me, but yeah. I didn't think it, I didn't think it would. It would cross it. over. Nah, I didn't think so. I'm so glad it did, though. <laughs> <laughs> what difference? You. What difference did it make? You know, I mean, having the cross that hit being the first single. I mean, did it just mean that take a lot of pressure, or what, what was it like? Yeah, I would say. I, you know, because they they always talk about this sophomore jinx and you okay, know I mean? so that was that was talk around then. But uh, yeah, that record came out and just went crazy. They had to they had to stop selling the single to sell the album. It was so nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but I mean, you had, back in those days, still had singles that had like ten remixes and and, and stuff. Oh, Teddy was a remix. <laughs> he, was, he he had crazy remixes for that album. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as I said, you had the Billie Jean version remix. I had pretty much, I had, was buying all the Maxi singles on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which, you know, as I said, I was a big Michael fan, but a massive Teddy fan. So, you know, for us, yeah. um, touring, though, how was it for you? Because that album meant going on tour around the world. What was that like for you? Well, we didn't, we didn't tour much. That, that was one of the, that was one of the issues why the group broke up for real because shortly after that album came out the success of that album got Teddy a label deal oh and Little Man yeah L-O-R yeah, so, now, so now he has Little Man artists that he's got to turn in albums for and he couldn't tour and produce albums so we didn't get to tour much we, we did the new edition tour we may have done one or two European tours, and that's pretty much it for real. Oh, yeah, we didn't we didn't tour much at all because <laughs> did the promoters not want? Could he could have stayed behind and done production? But could... oh, he wasn't doing that. That's what that's what should have happened, but he wouldn't he wouldn't allow that. Okay, so in those so there were a lot of people wanted. So in those when he was doing the stuff, he he says, "Look, if I'm not going to be there, you guys can't." Go out yeah, it wasn't tour. even yeah, it wasn't even talk of touring. You know what I'm saying? It was just if if somebody wanted us to tour, it never got to me. You know what I'm saying? He was working on these these records and he needed to be working. He needed to be in the studio. Yeah. So we missed out on a gang of money touring because wow. <laughs> yeah. Joe, oh, so after the new edition one, that was it. So you guys stayed back and stuff. So then, what 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 happens to three members of the group when Teddy's busy right, working in the studio? What did what did the three of you guys do? Well, I like I, I was doing my own music stuff. So that's when Jaheim and Donnell Jones and stuff were coming in. Probably, yeah. yeah, probably around that time. But yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that's one of the issues that black street always had even even during the first black street from what i understand yeah yeah it's, you make an album to go on tour because you know you're not gonna make record you're not gonna make money on the albums so you make your money on tour but he didn't allow us to tour uh, <clears throat> so the, the and i guess for fans who aren't in the industry um if you're selling eight million albums i would assume that the group's really getting a nice little check in the post for selling that many groups, albums. The groups never recoup. Groups never recoup. The album is, they were selling albums for what, $17? Yeah, yeah, sixty ninety nine. dollars yeah. Yeah, and the group gets, I believe we were getting like 25 cents. Wow. For the album. Yeah, like, you the album. get money on tour. 
Yeah. The group. I ain't talking about me. The group. And, and then they that, split it into four? Not only that. You got flights, you got hotels, you got like all of your expenses come out of your... 25 room. cents? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. It's, and so if you don't tour, you're not making money. And so, and we didn't tour. <laughs> wow. Okay. Goodness. <clears throat> you know, and I, and I think that's the hard part is to how... But then we, was Black Street signed to... Yes, uh, a a Teddy production. production. So, because I think we've seen the TLC stuff, so they were signed to Pebbles. So Pebbles got a big chunk of the stuff um, from LaFace, and and so they were left yeah. with stuff. So the same sort of thing with with sort of Black Street is that okay? You, you're signed to. I'm hit, sure that I'm sure that's happened with most of these R&B groups that yeah. are signed to a production company. Yeah. So the production company, the, the record label pays the production company, and the production company is supposed to pay the artist, but yeah. it don't always happen that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that's that's the, the cycle that you you said it. You know, I was robbed. I need to recoup what what I lost ten years ago, kind of thing, and and, and interest. I guess. Yeah. So, um, but then you guys go back to work on um, but in between that you guys were, were, were doing you did the remix with Janet Get So Lonely you did the stuff with Jay-Z you did the stuff with Foxy Brown so you were still um, putting in work uh, single um, still being yeah, relevant yeah yeah so um, so the, yeah so that you were still because yeah so the, you were still dropping singles until you started working on the family album what well, going into that album mark leaves and people ask okay how did terrell shows up and disappears what what was uh, from what was the situation because we never got to hear what happened to mark and how terrell shows up i'll tell you so that was a that was a we went on a new edition tour yeah right? And you said you were there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, my favorite tour. Huh? So, so we weren't the headliners on that tour. Yeah, new it was edition. new edition. Yeah, but we spent as much money in our production as new edition did. Yeah, it was a big set. Yeah, right. And it shouldn't have been. So, when we got off tour, we had no money. We we didn't. I didn't. I made maybe maybe five thousand, ten thousand dollars on that tour. Oh, are you kidding me? Every night, every city? Every night, every city, that money was supposed to be sent into a, an account <laughs> for us when we got off tour. When we got off tour, Teddy Riley told us that there was no money. He told us that management had stolen the money and there was no money. But, wait, luckily... The budget for the new album just opened up, right? So that's his way of pacifying us. Now, after the success of the first album, <clears throat> we were told that we would each get $500,000 as an advance. When, when, they, when they released the budget, so, okay, again, we get off tour, there's no money. When he releases the budget for the next album, there's $100,000 instead of $500,000 for each of us. And Mark said, where's my money? Like, this is not what we, this is not what we agreed to. This is not what we were told. And that's, that's, that's pretty much why Mark left the group or was put out the group. I don't know exactly how it went, but he, he, Mark stood up and demanded his money and now he's out of the group. Was this advance coming from Interscope? Say the, again? Was it Interscope that says this is what we're going to give you each of you guys the half a million? Was no, that this, Interscope? This was Teddy. This was Teddy's accountant. Oh, say that. Okay. Teddy's person, accountant, who told us how much money that we should each be receiving on the the next uh, album. Okay. And so the budget comes up, and we four hundred thousand short. Okay, <laughs> so Mark, wow. Mark, he wouldn't 
he wouldn't stand for it. He wouldn't do it. Me, I was in a situation where, you know, I'm like, I was dependent on that money from the tour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now it's not there. So, okay, I'll take this. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, it, it, it was, it was, Teddy's a, he's a, he's a, he's something else, man. <laughs> 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 and I know that's not the first time you heard it, and it, it won't be the last time you heard it. Everybody's not gonna lie on the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, I mean, just look at it. You look at, you look at God. You look at today. You look at Bernard Bell. <laughs> you look at Black Street. Like, why, why, why is all this revolving? Like. How many members have there been in Black Street? Joseph Stone Street, Levi, Chauncey, Dave, me, Mark, Terrell. That's seven people. Why? It's one common denominator. Yeah. And that's the it all. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, we when we, we spoke about um about because I've had various interviews and, and and a lot of the a lot of the common denominators from that is the what they reflected back on is that this person had gone through stuff and it's almost as if you know you said that you aren't like that you would you know you can't say if if someone stole from you that means I'm gonna have to steal back from you in order to recoup and then once I think I'm satisfied that I can come back but it's it's um and I do wonder if if people do this deliberately, or if they if they know what they're doing, or yeah. I, as I said, I, I, I if... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing. <laughs> but you, so you decided, okay, you know, it's, it, and you also had stuff coming in through your, your your publishing and other stuff, and 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 right. and, and so you said, okay, you know what. I'll, 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 and you you were almost given a heads up that look things could be a little can go south a little bit so be be on guard so did it surprise you or was it more or? i mean well it did surprise me because stuff like this has happened so many times before but it it did surprise me like why would you like why would you do this like you know like i come to the, i drive up to the studio one day and there's nobody there's nobody there it's just teddy and chauncey and so, like, this was after we, maybe we, we did a, a tour or something and we came home. And so, you know, you're going to take a few days for yourself or whatever. And then after that, you, you, you go to the studio and no one's there. I'm like, what's going on? So one of them was like, you didn't hear, you don't, you don't know what's going on? I'm like, nah, I said, hey, Mark's, Mark's not in the group no more. And I'm saying like, like, okay, what you gonna do now? You gonna bring somebody else into the group? Like, how many times do you think this is gonna work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I that's what I was surprised about. Like, how many, like, how many times you think you're gonna be able to get away with swapping numbers? It worked. Yeah. It worked with Dave and Levi. But that don't mean it's gonna work every time you, you know what I mean? And it yeah. did. It did work. Yeah, like yeah. Album, yeah. Well, what the um, with Terrell, where did he come from? Did you know him from anywhere, or was he just a audition? There's a there's a guy named uh, a guy by the name of Kenny Quilla, who's a good friend of Teddy, who you know, like a lot of the talent that Teddy's worked with came through him, came from him, like okay. he's somebody that he knows. So he knew Terrell, and Teddy put the word out, and you know, I'm looking for a guy. And Terrell, Terrell is, I still talk to Terrell is, to this day. Terrell is cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, it wasn't even about Terrell. It was about, you know what I mean? Like, first of Did all, you... the album wasn't all that great. That's, that's, that's for one. Mm. But you can't keep, you just, you know, like people see this and, you know, you're like, hold on. Now, last week it was these two guys. Yeah. First of all, these two, like, come on. And and I guess that there, there's also the fact that you, you know it's not a, a supermarket. You guys have developed a relationship, you know. So you you song together, you tour together, so that it's not just that there's there's a connection uh, that's been built. Yeah, that, we, that's, we that's, were connected. 
we were connected, but you know, like I, I don't blame Mark if he left or if they. Like I'm still not. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know 100%. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. It... I don't blame him. And I used to see like it was so it was so strange. Like I would see Mark. Like you know, we get our car service at the same time or whatever, and I I, I wouldn't even know what to say to him. You know wow. what I mean? Because he he might be thinking I had something to do with it. You know what I mean? But but since Black Street, me and Mark are like like we like we brothers. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? Like Mark and I have stayed in contact. Um, like we actually we have a business together. Like we okay. Me and Mark are yeah. But but during that time though, did you when you see him, did you just say what's up or did you just walk away or No, I just said what's up, Mark. You know? And he'd be like, What's up? You know what I mean? But it wasn't You didn't talk I about mean, what happened then? Mm -mm. Cause I really didn't know what happened. Like I yeah. didn't even <laughs> you know yeah. I still don't even know the whole the whole stuff, yeah. The whole story. I know it was money that was promised and then the money didn't show up. Oh, you want to give me these crumbs when I'm supposed to get this? Yeah. And there, there was a conversation and from the conversation, I don't know if he if he bounced or if you know, or if Teddy said, I don't want to deal with him because he, he asked him about his money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you also did mention the album. Um, what do you think went wrong with the production of the family album? Of I mean, people thought even the name was one is was almost like a a a, 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 a voodoo thing to say your album's called Finally because it almost spells the end. But what 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 was different when you guys went to record and work on that compared to the energy on another level? I mean, we have been burned. Well, for me anyway, you know what I mean. I only doing that record doing that album I only came to the studio when they called me to do vocals like I wasn't there just hanging around hey, we need you to do some vocals I am coming and that, that's how it was with me yeah um, as far as the the songs and the production I don't know I, I think Teddy had gotten a new uh yeah he had rebuilt his studio. So he he had rebuilt the studio and he he got rid of his his console and got a new one. And you know I think that had a lot to do with it. Like you said, the the title of the album might have been might have had something to do with it, but it, it wasn't the, it wasn't the same without Mark being there. Yeah. <clears throat> and what about um? And then I guess there were changes in the engineering and production team as well. Yeah, Producers so was it what's serving there for that album? No. Nope. Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Junior was there, but I don't think Sherman or uh, John was there. Oh, John Marie, yeah. Yeah, so it sounded... Um, and I, I think the first single, um, The Boyfriend, oh, Girlfriend, is oh. probably the worst song on the album. What, what, what was the feeling? Because I, I, I know it's Janet, but he could have brought on another track. I, I wasn't, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but that, that song wasn't the song even before Janet got on it. It was like, that, yeah, that whole, that whole album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, that was, I, 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 I didn't like the song. It was, um, it just didn't make sense, that particular track. And you had even Jahim, uh, sorry, Jahim, yeah, Jeru on it. And it was, it was, didn't have no con co cohesiveness. I, I, I told Mucho when I interviewed him that he should have, your love was probably, with Sauce Money, was probably the closest to No Dig. It probably would have been a better lead single. If you were to pick anything from the album, I would have put your love, um, the one with Sauce Money. Money, I forgot about Sauce. <laughs> I thought that that track was probably one of the better leader singles. Um, drama, we were told that Mary was supposed to be on the track. What happened? Yeah, so that, that's another song that me and Wes would do. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, yeah. Um, so I, I think what happened was, <clears throat> Ted, well, I'll tell you what happened. Teddy was supposed to do some production for her album on, on her that album she was working on at the time. And, um, you know, they, they spoke about this song 
And then I was supposed to feature on one of her records. Mm. So I flew to New York because it's my song. So I'm getting her, I'm recording her vocal. She thought that Teddy was coming to record her vocal because she thinking that this is a Teddy song, but it's really my, you know what I mean? It's my song. So anyway, so Teddy sends me to New York. I, I go in to cut a vocal and um, the, the following day, we have a session book for her song. So I go in the studio with her <clears throat> and she wants, she wants to, um, she wants to set up two mics in, in two, two rooms and record the song back and forth, like with ad libs, right? But that, like, I can't, I don't think, I, like, I don't think fast like that to, to do ad libs. She say something and I'm feeding off of her going right back in. That, that's- Is it like, crazy. like, like a cypher kind of thing? Well, I, yeah, I, I guess. You know, some people could do that. Some people have that, they have, Mary has it. Like she could just sing ad libs, you know. Oh I mean? goodness! Me, I'm gonna have to. I'll try something and then hold on. Let's rewind that and do it back. But I can't do that if she's, you know, if we going at the same time. I gotta feed off of her. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I think she got a little tight about that, as well as Teddy not being Teddy not coming to record the the, the session, even though it was my session, but he didn't relay that to her. So I ended up not being on her record <clears throat> and she decided, she called uh, Jimmy Iovine or Doug Morris or whoever and told them that she didn't want to be on the Black Street record. But, so, but that, go ahead, I'm listening. No, no, so you, you already had her vocals for the song. Yeah, I, yeah, we had her vocals, but she wanted them off. She didn't want to be a part of it. She said, take my vocals off. I don't want to wow. And then she she got, I think she got Joe to try this record with her, her record that yeah. I was supposed to be on. And then I think Casey ended up doing it with them. Don't ask me the name. I <laughs> no, no, it's fine. But it was a dope record too. I ain't gonna front. I missed out on that one <clears throat> because of Theodore. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think if he if if he had come to the studio, it, it could have worked out differently? If it, I'm pretty sure it would have worked out differently. Cause she was, she was like, plus I, I kind of, you know, I think, I think at that point, like she, well, I ain't gonna say at that point, I think people, producers just let Mary go in the studio and just, and just sing, you know what I mean? And then and that's, that's good for them. Me, I was trying to get what I wanted out of her. And I don't, I think she was looking at me like, who are you? Like, who are you? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, who are you to be trying to tell me how to sing? So it, it didn't work out. But, but when, when she when crazy. she made the call, Teddy didn't try and smooth it out. I don't know, man. I like I'm yeah. not involved with that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I just I just got there and realized Mary's coming. Matter of fact, I didn't realize it until I heard the new girl on the record. I was like, what happened? <laughs> don't want to be on the record no more. Then I thought about it. I was like, well, yeah, she was a little tight that he wasn't there. <laughs> mm. And then the thing with her and me, she wanted me to go back and forth. But I was like, nah, I can't do it like that. I said, you know, I tell you what, you lay your ad libs and then I'll feed off of what you're doing. <laughs> you know, that way, when I need to stop and go back, you know what I mean? It's not messing you up. But she was like, she, like, she really couldn't understand it. She was like, what you mean? Like, you, like, I'll get him on the mic and you get all the way. We go back and forth. I was like, uh, like, but we I, could I, try it, but that ain't really my thing. I can't. Yeah, really... <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I guess I find it strange because I, you know, I think we're we're gone used to singers recording, stopping and then patching it together. But she wanted to. She she records as if she's live on stage. Well, well, but I'm saying no. At this particular point in the song, she wants like she wants that that vibe, like where you feeding off of one another. Which is dope. Like I wish I could do it. I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just not me. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> that was a little. Wow. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, because we were. We, yeah, we 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 were. 
I think what we because we we got all the leaks that oh yeah Mary's going to be a, 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 on drama. We saw all the previous. So I got we, a vocal. I got a tape of it somewhere. I got a cassette of it somewhere with her on it. But yeah, we recorded it. But she she decided that she didn't want to be on it. I thought because so I saw I if you search drama featuring Mary, it's on YouTube. But I didn't. I thought maybe she. I didn't realize she actually did record it because so that I've seen her have her sing it. But it's. I don't know how it got leaked. I don't know how. You saw her sing it? No, not see her. The the vocals. Oh. So you, if you search for her on YouTube, you would you can get to hear the version of drama featuring Mary. Oh really? Oh, somebody at the label must have leaked it. Though. Yeah, because they 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 seem to do that that a bit. So <laughs> it wouldn't have been yourself, but they do. Somebody so somebody has leaked it out on YouTube already. So, um, but did, how did it sound compared to the girl that that did feature oh, it? it was, <laughs> See, this might be one of the issues too, because I was I was being super critical because I wanted Teddy to like it. I wanted him to love it. Yeah. You know what I mean. So <clears throat> when we finished, you know, my thing was, all right, I'm, I'm going to play it for Teddy and see, see what he thinks, you know. Oh, with Mary want, on it. Right. He may want you to do some stuff over or whatever. And she was like, you know, all right, cool, whatever. But, and when I played it for Teddy, he was like, yo, that shit, that's, well, excuse me, he's like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> I was like, I right. like, you know, I was like surprised. I, I thought, you know, he might be like, ah, you didn't do a good enough job. Getting yeah, yeah, yeah. Home, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, he liked it. He loved it, and then it just didn't happen. Like she, she, he didn't want to be. A, she didn't want to be on it for whatever reason. I, I really don't know the, the the real reason, but I think it's because he was supposed to do some stuff for her, and then he didn't do it, and then you know. I show up at the session. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the thing is that because we expected Mary on the track, because if we hadn't expected Mary on the track, we wouldn't have thought any better and we would have just enjoyed the right, song as it is. Sure. But because we're thinking Mary with the attitude, especially that kind of track, Right. We were just imagining her singing it with that kind of passion. So, if you, you, you're you listening to it thinking, yeah, we've been robbed for, with this. So, I think there was a... There was, that's how I felt because I listened to it. And I'm thinking, yeah, this doesn't sound like Mary, because we were told she was going to be on it. If we didn't were told, we probably would have just enjoyed the track as it was. Right, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um, then also, um, is it "I Dream in Black and White"? That was the next single that came out, and um, that was a single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. "I Dream in Black and White," but did, uh, did, did I make love and color. No, that that. That was the second single that came out. Yeah, they had the video where 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 the glasses are breaking inside the room and stuff. Yeah, they, they, he yeah, did they a had... video for that. No, yeah, yeah, he did a video for that. Nah, it was it was a uh, think about you. I read the paper. Oh, was that on the drama album? Not the drama album. <laughs> the, uh... the Never Level Two. Yeah, Level Two. Yeah, no, that was uh, my dream in black no, and white. I, but, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't I don't, but you know what? I, I, I it, you know, I, I looked looked at the tracks, the album. I was like, oh goodness, it, it, yeah, um, it, it just didn't fall through. But now you explain about the chemistry, the vibe, and and what was going yeah, it was, on. It was very different. Was yeah, very different. but then <laughs> after the album fell short, what happened to you guys? Then did you? How did it just disband? What what what? They, uh, Interscope dropped us from, from Universal. It's like, out of nowhere, boom, it's over. But you guys have just, you know, you did Platinum with your first, the second album does it, over 8 million worldwide, wins a Grammy. You've got yeah, Teddy think, there, <clears throat> and they could just drop was, you. Okay. What happened was, Interscope, Jim Yavin wanted, wanted us to, okay, so they were doing a merger at the time. Okay. They, they were doing this big merger, and Jimmy told Teddy to wait to put the album out because he couldn't get behind it like he needed to, being mm. that they were doing this merger. And Teddy insisted to put the album out. Teddy wanted his own staff now. And he just, he basically pissed Jimmy off. That's what happened. Teddy was like, Teddy is a superstar now. I sold all these records and boo, boo, boo. I know what I'm doing. Put my album out. 
And that's what happens. <laughs> he, 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 he did it to himself. Jimmy told, Jimmy asked Dre to hold off on putting records out, which Dre did. I think R. Kelly was signed at the time. He told R. Kelly not to, we going through a merger now. now. Now's not the time to put the album out. R. Kelly listened, but Teddy didn't. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so when they, when they, when you guys get dropped, what happens to to, to you guys? Working, Teddy works on a guy three album. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, but so MCA comes back and says, "Okay, <laughs> Universal comes then and they and they grab him and say, yeah, because I've spoken to <laughs> Mucho and 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 how nine one one. Were you were you there where they were Diesel and then we're doing nine one one? What were your thoughts? Did you think, wow, these guys are going to take over from us or?" Did you think they were? Nah, but I, but I, they, Diesel is, well, Diesel was, he passed away. Yeah, That's yeah. Just, Diesel was phenomenal, man. They had some dope records, too. Matter of fact, I think we did one of misery. the Misery. He did yeah. Misery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did Misery. And then, but then when you hear that, he, he, Teddy's going to do Guy 3, are you guys still in a, still, still nah, signed? We, nah, we, it was over at that point. But yeah, we weren't. We weren't. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> How did you take it? it? I mean, it was bad, man. It was. He just. He left us. He just left us stuck for real. But um, he did. He did call me to do some writing on that level three album, which I did. But uh, well, one song anyway. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that was pretty much the end of Black Street at that point. So then yourself, Chauncey, do you, Terrell, do you guys say, what do we do? Do we go on tour? Did you just all go your separate ways or? We just, we just all went our separate ways pretty much. And then you went just back into your writing production or what, what did you end up doing? Yeah. That's, I mean, if it, if it wasn't Black Street, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so then the Guy 3 album doesn't do, you know, they come out one single, it does well, but then the rest of it. Uh, he actually worked with Darren. Did you? Yeah, that's uh, the same uh, song. Uh, that, that's dancing. dancing. That yeah. Saying, yeah. Yeah, actually, I presented that song uh, to Teddy for them. Okay, did you did Darren tell you, hey, this is what we have, or did you what, what was it? How did that? I don't, I, don't, I don't remember how it went, but we was probably just hanging out and I heard the record. I was probably like, yeah, I could play this for them or whatever. So, yeah, I kind of broke it that okay. Uh, were, were you still <laughs> still cool with even though you broke up? Were you guys still talking and saying hi, or what was how was that I, like? I, I, not really, I was just, I was, you know, like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a chill. Dude. Yeah, we see you on the videos. We see you. We see you in yeah, the interviews. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's like that, but yeah. Me. But then, so after the guy three breakdown, you guys come back for another level two. DreamWorks come and say, yeah, we want to give you a chance. How did he get? Even Mark comes back in. So who, how, who broke is that? <laughs> Chauncey. So. I'm I'm in New York working. I was working with somebody. I forget what it was, but who it was. <laughs> but Chauncey calls me. He's like, "Yo, E, what's up, man? Like, Yo, I, I need you, man." So I'm like, "What's up?" He's like, "I don't want to talk to you over the phone." I'm like, "Well, I'm in New York." He was like, "Well, when can you get back to Virginia?" I was like, "Tell me what's going on." Because, <laughs> because, like I said, I, I grew up with Chauncey. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I looked at him like that's my man. So, <clears throat> so I. After the session, I don't know if I cut the session or right after the session, I get in the car and I drive straight to his studio. Cause I I'm trying to find out what's going on. He he don't sound good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's wow. up? New York to Virginia. Yeah. How long is that? Is that because that sounds six hours. Wow, six that's hours. A, so you drove six hours. I didn't even go home. I went straight to his right straight to him. Wow. And like, what's up, man? What's going on? So he's like, uh, and I had seen Chauncey in a long time. So he He's like all oh, cut up, and I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, "What's up, me? Like, what's going on?" He's like, "Well, I'm gonna talk to you. I got to do this interview. Somebody from the UK was there interviewing him. Okay. So I guess they had already gotten the news that Black Sheep was coming back together. 
Okay, so from my understanding, they tried, it was Mark, Teddy, Dave, and Chauncey. <clears throat> because I was done, like, I, I was done. <laughs> <clears throat> so DreamWorks said that they didn't want that. They wanted the, another level lineup. Okay, okay. All right, so Chauncey calls me. He ain't, He's not telling me nothing about Black Street. So I, like I said, I get to a studio and he's like, yo, let me do this interview real quick and, and then I'll, um, you know, I'll let you know what's going on. So it, 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 he has a security door in his studio. The only way you can get out. And once you get in, the only way you can get out, somebody has to buzz you out, buzz yeah. the door. <clears throat> so I have my nephew with me. Charlie, can you buzz that door? Hit this door so I can get out of here. So he's doing the interview, I'll leave. So he calls me, like I'm halfway home. He's like, what's up, why you leave? I'm like, nigga, I've been working. You call me all the way from New York. I come <laughs> down here and then you talking about you doing an interview. Like, like no, I'm going home. I said, if you, if you want you, if you want to highlight me, just come by the crib. So he's like, all right. I said, look, if this got anything to do with Teddy Riley, I don't want nothing to do with it. He's like, no, 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 it's got nothing to do with Teddy. So I'm like, all right, well, come by. So a little later on, a car pulls in the driveway. So I'm looking, I'm like, who is this? A, a, a white Benz. <clears throat> it's like, that looks like Teddy car. <laughs> Teddy gets out, Mark gets out, Chauncey gets out, and Sifu gets out. He's funny, he got ahead of us, Sifu. Yes, like, real talk, I, would, I wanted to fight Teddy, for real. I <laughs> <laughs> but then I saw seafood and I was like, I ain't trying to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I feel about it. Yeah. Right, so, <laughs> so they come in and, you know, Teddy's giving me, eh, we, we got a deal on DreamWorks and, you know, like, I need you to do this. Like, they won't do it without the four of us. And I'm like, like, yo, be, if, if I agree to do this, it can't be like it was. Like, this, this got to be a four-way, a four equally divided. He was like, yeah, of course. And woo, woo, you know, everything I wanted to hear. <laughs> and then his his manager, okay. and, she, and she was managing us at the time. Well, prior to this, on, the, on another level album, she was managing us. So I said, look, if, if we do it, she can't be involved. And she was a good friend of mine too. But I just, at that point, I was just like, nah, we got to separate business from, from anything else. And so he was like, yeah, nah, absolutely. She ain't going to be involved. In so we pressed on. So all right, we agreed, did the album. We having a marketing meeting. And then here, come, here she comes. She's in the meeting. I'm like, what's, like, what's going on? I, like, I already told you. He's like, no, 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 no. She's not working for, she's not here on me, for me. She's here to represent the record label. So she works for DreamWorks now. Yeah. Now, you know, years prior to this, I would have just said, I know better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of went along with it. <clears throat> this time, I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that no more. So I called my lawyer. I'm like, oh, I'm in this meeting. This person is here. She ain't supposed to be here. Teddy's telling me she works for the label and not him. She said, oh, well, let me call DreamWorks and get her employee identification number. Can you do that? I'm on speaker. So she calls, they give her the information, no, she's not an employee here, but she is, uh, Black Street has retained her or something like, she's consulting for Black Street. That was enough for me. I was like, that's it, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so we did the one, we, actually we did two singles off of that album and then I left, I, I couldn't take it no more. <clears throat> how, do you, how, did, how did you think the album I, I like the album overall. It wasn't another level, but it was better than finally. It wasn't it wasn't the first album, but it was better than finally. So it was it was all right with me. You did Wizza Wizza and with uh, Mystical and did Deep. That Wizzy Wizzy Wow was the worst record in the <laughs> history of records. <laughs> but you couldn't tell Teddy. It was it was better records on the album. It was just that was it was it was it was it wow <laughs> yeah yeah I, you know what as big as a fan as i actually don't own the album and i and i actually haven't listened to 
Um, yeah, it, it, I, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, I think after finally, I just couldn't. Um, I just lost the interest in. Yeah, I couldn't get it back, and 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 you could tell, even guy three. Um, yeah, it's, 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 he's he's not he ain't, he ain't doing the same type of stuff. Yeah, so you know, you know that that album didn't go well. So then you go back to were you staying in Virginia? Go back to New York and stop. You know, still going no, back. No, I, I, no, I stayed in Virginia. I stayed in Virginia. And you were still <laughs> back into writing and, and and producing and stuff like that. Pretty much, yeah. You know, even the Jaheim stuff wasn't the same. So <laughs> yeah, but then because Jaheim decided, you know. I'm giving up. I'm not going to continue with this recording stuff, and and then also the the landscape of music changed. Hip hop was dominating the radio and stuff, and and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did you adapt as a you know songwriter and stuff, knowing that well, goodness, the outlet for my songs are shrinking compared to the night. Nice Still adapting. It's you know, it's not easy. <laughs> It's not easy, but you know, I mean, life, you know, things, life changes, you, you things in life change, man, you, you got to move on, and, mm. you know, gotta figure out some other things. <clears throat> now, the, the thing is that all of a sudden I started to see, um, uh, when I joined Instagram early this year, I started to see the official Black Streets and I see yourself, Chauncey, Levi and Mark, and it was almost as if, well, the four of you guys were able to come back and you were doing lots of touring. How does that sort of this current con incarnation of Black Street come together? And this, uh, well, uh, it came together. So Chauncey acquired the trademark for Black Street. So he's the owner of the trademark. <clears throat> okay. And, um, you know, we, Mark and I worked with Teddy for a while. Teddy and Dave, we toured with Teddy and Dave for a while. Oh. Then T Chauncey and Dave toured with Teddy for a while. And, yeah, everybody just got tired of Teddy. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, is, Teddy, Teddy is the, he's the, like, you know, we've been working together for uh, myself, Mark, Chauncey, and Levi have been working together now for like six years. Six years, it, wow. Yeah, five, six years. And this is the best. It's it, like, this is the best time I've, I've had with Black Street. I mean, other than, you know, the success of Black Street is another yeah. thing. As far as touring and just being comfortable and, you know, not having to wear, you know, things that you don't want to wear because he wants to wear it. <laughs> okay. it's, yeah, it's a whole nother. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just what we got going on now is good. And, and we're working on some new music, too. Yeah, you know, um, Jay Hart's been talking to me about, uh, yeah, about. Yes, <laughs> huh? yes, sir. How is he as a producer? Because, you know, um, Mucho talks about him, Sprague talks about him. Um, I've he's heard his. Crazy. He's crazy. He, you, you'll hear it. You hear it. <laughs> he's got really good stuff, man. So then, uh, when can we expect to hear from uh, uh, some new stuff from Black Street? Well, uh, very soon. I, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, <laughs> you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear no diggity again in a in a different format, a different version of no diggity, very soon. And then shortly after that, you'll hear a single from Black Street. Okay. Another one of the uh, final kind of questions they ask is, um, of course, everyone wants to know relationship with because they also because I think during the after the versus battle and stuff, um, what 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 was your thoughts about it? Just briefly, Teddy and Babyface. Did you watch it? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. I think Teddy, you know, he didn't put his songs in the right order. Yeah, after. yeah, yeah. No, definitely, but, yeah. But it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was entertaining. I it was an entertaining it. stuff. I I almost fell out my my dropped my phone when I heard him play deep. I'm thinking, of all the tracks, don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. Like he ain't, he t he's not as sharp as he once was. I don't. I mean, in my opinion, <laughs> yeah. the uh, yeah, I've I've just looked. I'm looking at all the questions they've asked, and um, 
and and you've pretty much answered all all all, all sort of the questions in there. Um, will you collaborate with any new artists? Love to hear you sing with Tank, Chris Brown, Trey Songs, Miguel. That's somebody's asked that. Have you? <laughs> I'd, I'd love it. I mean, actually, I, I'm working with uh, Leela James right now. I'm trying to get some some stuff done with her. Wow. You know who Leela James is? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, well, you could Google her. She's yeah, yeah. A, um, like a soul singer. So um, you don't know who Leela James is? I'm sure I will. But, you know, I, yeah, I'm like you when you were married, not on the oh, spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Cause I, I was interviewing Father MC and he says, I asked him what's his favorite track on Uptown. And he says, One Night Stand. And I was like, I was expecting him to say, Do for you or something. So, of course, I'm like, One Night Stand. Then he started to sing and I was like, Oh, yes, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know the track. So, I'm yeah. sure I will. I'm just going to go through. Um, what do you think, Black Street? Okay, yeah, we've answered about the Black Street breaking up and stuff. Um, the. Um, uh, as David, have you ever met? You've met Dave, right? Dave Hollister. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I started, so actually, I did a song on Dave's uh, his first solo album, "Baby Mama Drama." That's that's the song I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and we've toured. We've toured. We've toured with Dave. Yeah. Dave is my dude. Somebody asked, did Chauncey dislike Dave? And and and. Nah. No. Nah. Nah. Okay. No, you know how it is because they, you know, they because. As fans, we see the change, but there isn't any. No you one don't comes. Know why, right? Yeah, we don't know why. And and and, and I guess these are the, these are the things. And and I guess that's that that was one of the reasons why. Um, yeah, but to see that's something that that's something that Teddy would have would have said to, you know, one or the other to try to cause division. He he yeah. does stuff like that. <laughs> He said he was he, in an interview. He mentioned he was he he was working with Black Street again to record new stuff. But that's um, and I did speak to someone in and um, in the camp to say no, that that wasn't the case. But that was an interview. But the just to clarify, this new track, these new albums, is no four Teddy. of you guys and no, no Teddy. No, no Teddy. Okay, okay. How much how much of your stuff is going to be there? Because as I mentioned, drama and can get you out of your mind were very different from the rest of the album. So you've got a very unique style of record singing and and, and writing. How much of that would we see on on the album? Well, we I mean we just getting we just getting started. So I, I definitely plan to do at least one as you know usual. Hopefully more, but yeah, it'll be there. It'll definitely be there. <laughs> okay. So with all my guests, as I wrap up, I always ask them if you were stuck in an elevator and um, they, you know, they said it'll take a couple of hours to get it fixed. But while we're fixing it, we can get you a movie to watch. What would you request to watch? The movie? Yeah. What movie would you want to watch if you're stuck in an elevator and, and they're saying, look, yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're going to get you out, but watch your movie until we get the thing fixed. Life. Okay, the Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like. Oh, okay. Dream Girls is another one I like. Wow. Okay. Life. I haven't seen that in a minute, but I will look at it. They're about to bring out the film, but they say, look, we're going to play a track just to get before the movie comes on. What, what song would you think you'd request to listen to? Oh, say it again now? Yeah. Just so... They're about to put on the movie, but they said, look, it'll take us a few minutes to get the movie on. We'll play a little song for you before the movie's on. What what song would you request? One song. Yeah, that's the one song before the movie comes on. So this is this will be your song. Like, yeah, man, you know what? If... Uh, I'm that's, that's, that's hard. Uh... For Donny Hathaway, for all we know, I don't know. Okay, you know, we all, most of us have a favorite track. So mine is Michael Jackson's "Baby Be My uh, Lady My Life." Um, that's that's a, that's that's my ultimate song. So if I'm no matter where I am, they say, "Look, we have one song." I'll just always say, "Lady My Life," Michael Jackson. That's right. so. I'll just so, so is that Donald? Yeah. How is that's your track? That's your go-to track? 
I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay with that. <laughs> they did say what? Who? Inf- what's your? Who was your main influence vocally and, and with the style of your singing and and stuff? <clears throat> I, I always say this. It's a gentleman that I um that I mentioned earlier. His name is Ronald Scruggs, and you've probably never heard of him, mm-hmm. but. <clears throat> He, along with Bernard Bell, are the reason why I'm sitting here right now. Wow. We'll talk. Wow. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Halftime Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, But most importantly, why don't you consider being a member as a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat.